The market has been crashing hard, but I'm still not worried about Dogecoin. Before I jump into it, let's look at the crash and everything that happened today. So Bitcoin fell 15% from $36,000 to around $30,700. Either an XRP shed 14.5% and 18%, while Solana and Binance Coin were the hardest hit of the top cryptos, both dropping 19%. Overall, crypto is now worth $1.4 trillion, having lost 15% over the weekend to its nadir since July 2021. Because of this, the amount of liquidations has now gone above $1 billion in the past 24 hours with Bitcoin and Ethereum traders bearing the brunt of it. The total amount of liquidations sits at $1.10 billion as of now. Longs account for $789.27 million and shorts came out to a total of $310.04 million. Also, we're seeing that the crypto and equity markets are increasingly correlated, particularly with tech stocks, as Bitcoin's price has tracked blue-chip tech stocks such as Apple, Amazon, and Microsoft all year. But David Nage, portfolio manager at crypto investment firm Arca, talked about how the crypto market can come out of it and why the correlation has risen so much in the first place. Nage reasoned that a previous depegging of correlations between digital assets and tech stocks happened after March 2020, when both equity and crypto markets spiraled due to the pandemic becoming a black swan event. Crypto markets took off in April, May and June of 2020 while tech stocks were still finding their footing. And this happened because of the innovations we saw in the DeFi sector. So, it stands to reason that a rebound in crypto markets might be triggered once we see more experimentation across DeFi in gaming and decentralized finance. We're not seeing tremendous innovation in DeFi. Instead, we're mostly witnessing copy-paste projects that mimic Ethereum-powered DeFi projects that were popular in 2020. And this is what Mark Cuban said yesterday as well. He said that the majority of the DeFi market is bound to die off because of how people are copying each other. He also said that crypto is going through the lull that the internet went through. After the initial surge of exciting apps, NFTs, DeFi, and P2E, we saw the imitation phase as chains subsidized the movement of those apps to their chains. What we have not seen is the use of smart contracts to improve business productivity and profitability. That will have to be the next driver. When businesses can use smart contracts to gain a competitive advantage, they will. The chains that realize this will survive. So there you have it. This is how the decoupling can happen, and I hope that it happens soon. But in any case, I'm not too worried about Dogecoin. While several Dogecoin-inspired coins crashed today, Doge, even despite the crash, is still solid. There's Shiba Predator that lost almost 40%, and there's another one called Teddy Dog which lost almost 90%. Now even though $15.12 million worth of Doge futures were liquidated, according to Into the Block the majority of the Doge holders are still in profit. Dogecoin is showing a decent level of profitability despite the correction in the crypto market. Compared to Bitcoin, Doge has lost less of its value with adjusted volatility. As the data suggests, its profitability currently sits at approximately 53%, which puts Dogecoin far above the majority of the crypto market. Its biggest competitor in 2021, Shiba Inu is showing far less profitability for investors with 31%. 50% or above profitability of a digital asset shows a healthy supply distribution and usually shows a stable future for the asset. Dogecoin's profitability had been around the level of 50% for a long time, even though the asset has lost over 80% since its all-time high. But still, additional on-chain indicators are showing short-term bearish tendencies with a drop in large transactions on the network and negative network growth, which currently sits at the negative 0.15%. And this is why I've been saying that I'm bearish in the short term and bullish in the long term about Dogecoin. It's time to hold on to your Doge and not succumb to the fear and pressure. Now before we talk more about the crash, let's look at some great for the crypto market from today. While Americans are upset about the 8.5% annualized inflation rate, it's nothing compared to Turkey's monthly 7.25% and annualized 70% inflation. During April, there has been a sharp yearly spike in Bitcoin trading on Turkish markets. So much so that Bitcoin reached a plus 1.7% premium on Turkey's crypto exchanges at the beginning of May. 
Also, another great news came from Australia. So Australia is finally set to release its crypto exchange traded funds. The set of ETF formally slated to launch last month will be listed on the CBO exchange this Thursday to track the performance of Bitcoin and either. And yet another great news came from AMC, which released its earnings report recently. CEO of AMC Theaters revealed that cryptos and other digital payment methods accounted for more than a third of the online payments for the company during Q1 2022. Now let's talk about how the market has been reacting to the crash. On-chain data shows that Bitcoin whales have been depositing their Bitcoins on the exchanges in massive numbers. As per data from CryptoQuant, the all-exchange inflows of Bitcoin have touched a one-year high. Similarly, the spot exchange inflows have touched a two-year high. Also, on-chain data from Santiment further shows that more than 40k Bitcoins moved to the exchanges on Monday, which is the largest single-day inflow after December 2019. Now the bad news is that Santiment also reported that the funding rate data indicates a massive amount of shorts are coming in after Bitcoin fell below 30k for the first time in about a year. It means that either the bear market is far from over or will trade sideways for a while. Coming back to some positive data, look at this. Data from on-chain analytics company Glassnode indicates a significant rise in the number of Bitcoin addresses holding more than one Bitcoin. People holding at least one Bitcoin have increased, and the number marked a new all-time high of more than 836k. Also, retail investors appear to be returning to the Bitcoin market. Addresses holding at least 0.01 Bitcoin have also been on the rise, reaching new all-time highs of almost 10 million. Also, over the past week, crypto investment products saw net inflows totaling $40 million and Bitcoin saw net inflows of $45 million, according to a new CoinShares report. This is a sign that investors are taking advantage of the market to get into exchange-traded Bitcoin products at reduced rates. One possible reason is that while price weakness has resulted in Bitcoin and Ethereum falling 50% below the all-time highs they saw in November, it's still not as bad as previous bear markets. About this, Glassnode said that it remains modest when compared to the ultimate lows of prior Bitcoin bear markets. July 2021 reached a drawdown of minus 54.2% and the bear markets of 2015, 2018 and March 2020 capitulated at lows between minus 77.2% and minus 85.5% its off all-time highs. Now coming to the bad news, NFT sales have dropped 42.85% lower than the previous week. NFT sales on Ethereum were hit the hardest as the blockchain saw a 44.83% loss in NFT sales volume this past week. And this is of course adding to the selling pressure on Solana, Polygon, and ETH. Now let's talk about those altcoins that surge even during this bloodbath. There was a 15.75% gain for a project called Maker, and then there was Persistence, which saw a gain of 16.4%. Polygon also bounced back with a 14.59% gain. Another interesting thing is that not everyone's bearish right now. JP Morgan's top strategist Marco Kalinovic is sticking to his bullish guns, saying central banks have reached peak hawkishness and recommending investors buy up risky assets. Also, even as Bitcoin's price has fallen 50% from its highs, MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor tweeted that there's almost no price low enough at which his business analytics software company would be forced to sell Bitcoin. Also, crypto market intelligence platform Sandiment said that a gloomy reaction to Bitcoin falling below 30,000 to start the week is necessary for a rebound. Santiment says that the purging of traders and investors who exit the market at the first sign of plummeting prices usually leads to a truly notable bounce afterward. It also said that, with Bitcoin now having retraced all the way down to $33,900, trader sentiment has fallen to six-week lows. We typically prefer to see capitulation signs like this, as weak hands leaving the space is generally what is needed for a truly notable bounce. Now coming back to Dogecoin, as I said earlier, I'm not too worried about it. Even though its price correlation with Bitcoin has risen to 0.88, the percentage of holders in profit is still well over 50%. It's currently trading around 11 cents and I expect it to continue trading sideways at least in the short term. But in the long term, I'm still bullish. In any case, I'd love to know if you're still going to hold your Doge and cryptos even after this bloodbath. 
Let me know in the comment section below.